that we are now trying to um, improve on and, and, and um, multiply the, the outputs that we had in phase one that took place in 2015 to 2018. Uh, this is event is called CESA in Focus. Um, it's an event that is looking at um, the higher education cluster of the continental education strategy agenda for the African Union. Uh, that is looking at how to enhance and to improve and, and to, to try to make uh, the CESA in focus is being organized by the HACWA initiative uh, through the Association of African Universities and being held, uh, collaborated through with the coordinating institution which is Oprel Global where I belong. My name is Apio Query. I welcome everyone. Thank you for being with us today. We have a fantastic uh, panel and we are looking forward to listening and hearing what the panelists have to say. Uh, we have opportunity to also have you as attendees to be able to ask questions and then to let us know what we should focus on. Now, critically, um, this is when this is the, the the fifth event that we are holding in in the line of CESA in focus. We are trying to look at how data can be a, an enabling factor in creating policy in higher education within the continent. And so the different series are looking at um, specific um, areas in higher education, but also looking at how we can use data in those areas to enhance the policy that is within the continent and to make the continent education uh, higher education more, more um, to the current level or even higher than the current level that exists within the globe. So we will thank you so much for being here. This event has um, uh, the, the coordinator for the subcluster for industry and, and academia that is under research studies is Professor Oyole. Uh, I will give him the floor later on. But before we move ahead, um, I just have a little bit, a few instructions to let all the attendees be aware of. Uh, when you look down on your screen, you'll be able to see um, an icon that is written Q&A. We will use that um, function to to, to, to to be able to know what you're thinking of as, a, as an attendee. So use that function to send any questions that you have, any comments that you have throughout the webinar, we'll be looking at through it and alerting the panelists to any questions that exist so that they can address it. So use that specific function. The chat function is not enabled for attendees, so please use the function of Q&A. But in case you have anything, please feel free to let us know so that we can be able to um, uh, confirm and be able to alert the panelists to that. Now, another critical thing, as I've mentioned before, these five events are all related. Uh, we are looking at the transversal uh, data and policy nexus within the continent. So we, we are looking today at industry and an academia, but we will also try to merge all the events that we've done throughout. Our next event is coming up on 29th, uh, but thank you so much. Now, I'll give the floor um, to Professor Tiena Ile, just to give a, a short opening uh, remarks and then we can proceed. Professor Ile. Professor Ile, can you hear me? Or Jonathan, will you be able to give the speech? Okay, yeah. I think he's muted. Yeah, he's, I can see him in, but I can't see his... Professor Ile, you're muted. Please unmute your mic. Okay. okay. Hello. Professor Ile, yes, you. Yes, we can hear you now. Good afternoon. Okay. Okay. I would like to join my voice to yours and uh, say good afternoon to all participants and uh, also. Uh, say to us all a, a good uh, afternoon. So this is a, I think the third time we heard this uh, this uh, uh, CISA uh, webinar, and I think that uh, this also will bring us more knowledge by sharing the information to us uh, across all Africa. So thank you all for participating in this uh, third session. And I wish us all 
fruitful discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Ile. We really appreciate uh, the, the, the patronage and, and the leadership function that our Association of African University is doing. So thank you for being with us today. Um, just one final instruction. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, so we will be able to share with all participants once the official version is ready. And then also most critically, this event is being translated into, interpreted into different languages, English, Portuguese, and, and, and French. So please feel free to look um, at the bottom line. There's a global icon, click on it and choose the language that you feel you're most comfortable listening um, uh, through so that you can be able to get exactly what, what the panelists are talking about. So thank you so much. I'll hand the floor to Obadina so that he can pro continue with the proceedings. Welcome, Obadina. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to the CESA Higher Education in Focus of Events series. Today's webinar is targeted at the leaders and other stakeholders in the academia and the industry, and is aimed at discussing collaborations between the academic and the industry and how to improve it. It will involve a presentation on industrial academia collaboration and technology transfer, which will be delivered by Professor Olushola Oyewale, followed by a roundtable discussion, which is going to involve representatives of the industries and universities from South Africa and Nigeria on the expectations of the universities from the industries and vice versa. This discussion will also address the needs, availability, and sources of data to better support policy decisions related to enhanced Hello. Uh, can can everybody hear Obadina? Hi. About him. Okay. Professor Olushola Oyewole is a professor of food science and technology with a specialization in food microbiology and biotechnology. He was the former vice chancellor, Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta Funab in Nigeria, and former president, Association of African Universities, AAU. He is the coordinator, CESA subcluster on research and graduate studies. Uh, Professor Iwole, you have the floor now, sir. Thank you. Uh, Professor Iwole, are you there? Uh, Professor Iwole, are you there? Okay, while we await uh, Professor Iwole to come on board, I want to also use this opportunity to introduce the other panelists for this webinar. This webinar uh, will be allowing panelists from the industries and academia talk more on this issue of industry academic collaboration. Uh, among the panelists for today is Dr. Yemisi Adefunke Jeff Agbola. She is a lecturer in biological sciences and the acting director, Continuing Education Center, University of Medical Sciences, Endo in Nigeria. She was a Fulbright Scholar 
at Auburn University, United States of America. Also a postdoctoral visiting scholar at with special interest mycotoxicology, food safety, and gender responsive agricultural research. Dr. Yemisi Jeff Agbola is the president and founder of Voice of Women in the Development of Agriculture. Uh, at this junction, before we continue, uh, Professor Oyewole is going to take the floor for his presentation on industry academia collaboration and technology transfer. Prof, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Obadino. Uh, it looks as Uh, can I start? Is my can you help me to load up my slide, please? Hello. Hello. Hello, Prof. We are hearing you, sir. You can hear me, please. Yes, can I uh, appear happy to load my slide from there? Okay, one second, Professor Yone. Okay. Okay, I'm speaking on industry, collaboration and technology. And the first issue that we want to address is that why should universities and the industry collaborate? And I want us to know that collaboration universities and industry is critical for development. Another thing is that it's an important avenue to which you know and text can be promoted. Okay, screen is covered. Thank you very much. Which uh, slide number two? Yeah. It's an important avenue through which you can promote innovation and technology transfer. It's also an avenue industry. Uh, when a university collaborates, there are some expectations of universities and expectations of industries that are involved collaboration. The next slide, please. Yes, for the universities, they uh, increase can support in their infrastructure development, that the industry can help them improve some funds a new through which universities can their students to practical skills in the industry. The, many universities are connected with universities. They can benefit from the research facilities of the universities. This collaborative industry and universities facilitate development with the industry. Let me now look at the benefits of the industry's collaboration. The next slide, please. The benefits. Number one, they can help 
research and development agendas and avoid duplications on both sides. Number two, it stimulates additional private R and D investment in, in both sectors. When universities and industries collaborate, it promotes the enhancement of their capabilities in scientific and technological development. Indeed, this type of collaboration foster easy commercialization, research and development comes. Universities can do research and see the outcomes of their research market within a very short time. Really, this type of collaboration increases mobility of labor between the public and private sectors. It also increases the propensity to introduce new products through the research that are carried out in the universities. The next slide, please. I want to look at the difference of university industry collaboration, the different types of university industry collaboration, and I've categorized them into three. The one is the one that I refer to as the high relationship type, <laughs> where they are involved in research partnership, to involved in providing some research services, and both the industry and the university share their infrastructures. The next slide, please. Medium one. Medium collaboration, the next slide. Whereby promote academic entrepreneurship, development and commercialization of technologies uh, generated from the university, which the industry help them to develop. It is also an avenue through which training opportunities are offered social industry employees within the university system. And the last one, the next slide, please, is the one that I refer to as in the low, uh, low collaboration, whereby all they are interested in is in doing research that we result to patents that the industries can take up, or the use of some efforts to collaborate informally together. They engage in conferences together. They also engage in some meetings and social networking. The next slide, please. Okay, about to university industry collaboration. One will be interested that who are those who should facilitate this? And I want to submit that an industry should not just be the one collaborating between themselves. The government is very critical in promoting university industry collaboration. The next slide, please. We have looked at some of the things that motivates universities to collaborate with industry. The next one, universities are encouraged to collaborate with the industry because it helps them to upgrade their infrastructure. It's also an avenue of providing some grants for the research of the people in the university. We found out that there have been some commercial companies that beneficially that financially benefit researchers and the universities. It's an avenue of even promoting the universities. When universities collaborate with the industry, they put publicity for the university. Indeed, this type of collaboration is to retain their staff. It has also helped to make it easy for the product of the universities to get jobs. This collaboration has created an entrepreneurship culture, not just with the staff of universities, but also with the students that the various universities. Let's now look at what motivates companies for wanting to collaborate with universities. The net motivates companies for wanting to collaborate with universities. The net collaborate with universities because it gives them access to new ideas and new technologies. When they collaborate with universities, the loss is reduced in that they don't need to engage or study for R and D. They can depend on the research staff of the universities, or it gives them access to fiscal facilities that are located in universities which may not be found in the industry. In the 
happen, often when they happen, also encourage the staff of the industries to upgrade their applications. When you look at this type of collaboration, just like it, in that it creates a culture of innovation within the industry itself. Next slide, please. As mentioned briefly, some barriers to universities collaborating barriers we mentioned in the course of our discussion. Please, as some industries that to be, for example, barriers. Please slide this. Okay, next, next slide. Next, yes. quite often, of people and quite often, people in the university industry, the same thing can be about the industry, they do not have sufficient income. It can also be in universities in Africa. There is no good reward for faculty involvement in university technology transfer. Academics are more or less compensated for the research they do and the publication. Aid. The aspect of their collaborations appears sort of in the in the system of, of the There's a lot of bureaucracy between the university industries to come. To the universities, and luckily, I would I want to note that insufficient resources for technology within, within the university itself, in most you don't have to put in to encourage this. But the whole, I want to submit that when universities and industry collaborate, both the universities and the benefit. Next slide, please. Value of the industry. Next slide, please. Number one, values. Values of unique collaboration. Next slide, please. The next slide. The universities came to expense for their academics. When they collaborate with the industry. Number two, this is our collaboration with the universities and the power that universities need for development is more or less true type of collaboration. I note some staff of the university who are involved in this type of collaboration and some extra work get in this. Indeed, when universities collaborate with the industry, they do not generate theoretical knowledge. They generate knowledge. The same thing can be said about the industry. The industry work in collaboration with the with the industries. They get ideas that was their innovation. New ideas are generated through collaboration. Indeed, many industries that are involved in collaborating with the industry have a recorded increase and increased revenue, and they are able to make risk and approach to the system. Uh, since we have seen this collaboration to both the university and industries, also politics that promote university in the collaboration. Next slide, please. Next slide. First, please to generate that there should be an incentive grant. If we can find a way of having an incentive grant, matching grants within universities, it will help their color with the thing. The study that needs to be put in place is performance based fund of university and for researchers. That should not be rewarded based on publications alone. It should also be rewarded based on the output 
which can be seen when it with the industry. Clive, please. Another policy that we need to put in place is that of intellectual property rights regime within the universe. Quite often, when you have one of the issues that have been called is the ownership of the intellectual property, which is needed in place in place that says that is even before the commencement of such collaboration. The last thing that, thing that we need to do bring up the culture of establishing research parts and that's incubate within the universities. Agencies can put in place easy for academics to be involved in collaborating with the industry. We need to mention the first of the story is that of engineering center. Please. The next slide, please. Okay. Before we get it, there are some developments in universities and the, the academic collaboration. For example, 15, when you look at this type of situation, Many universities are afraid of collecting the other that do not lose their staff to the industry and some little skeptical. Academia loses to the as the pay in the industry yeah, that part of the universe. Uh, another major change that the university system is flexible enough, the African setup. But in the German setup, they have a flexible, flexible system whereby they allow academics to spend some days in the universities, in the industry. This type of uh, flexibility has made it easy for them to collaborate with industry. this. And this for share some studies. Story is that Center is a private company which is focused on technologies. What this company does, the company is encouraged to donate and it stimulates to, to the development of soft skills. Because of their cooperation with the university. The next slide is that company called Ethic Management, particular industry. This company is located within the university system. I enjoy the advantage of campus culture. And where universities are located within the universities, it needs to be easy. So this is one more that can propose universities in Africa if they want to promote industrial the story is that of a university. University of Agriculture, the third the internet. What I share about this one is, is that university must be established that is the university. It is the students to the court I put and they they are managers in themselves. And these managers what who also feel what you know in we stand this for this initiative. It has led to the estimate of an impact 
begin and I think that a model that we emulate in our African university. Lastly, please, the, the method discuss what university can do, what university can do, what the academic relationship. One, We need to develop a university policy. University can develop a university industry, university industry partnership policy. Policy it makes it easy for us to collaborate with the industry. Number two, universities should set up a development office. A research and development office is located within the university. It makes it easy for the to that office they need to get to go if they want to collaborate the device. Thirdly, let the research and development of us as the university shop property office and the economy is of so soft this is in place. We all want to encourage that university should have their own shops. Or equals the facility with the university. I also believe that universities for all should encourage collaboration in all local uh, industries and allow I can interact freely with their colleagues in the industry. If there is good action, then progress will be recorded on both the side of the university and the industry. Thank you. This is the end of my presentation. Sorry for this up with the with the I think that I cannot request about you now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Oyewole, for that presentation that has uh, and uh, emphasize and open more on the title of today's webinar, Industry Academic Collaboration and Technology Transfer. Uh, the next session now is where we have panelists to discuss more on issues that have to do with industry, academia, collaboration, and technology transfer. Uh, before we start this session, uh, permit me to introduce to us the panelists. Uh, I started with Dr. Yemisi Adefunke Jeff Agbola. Also in the room as panelists, we have uh, Abdurazak Adepowale, who is a professor in the Department of Food Science and Technology, Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta Funab, here in Nigeria. He was the pioneer director, Directorate of Research, Innovations and Partnerships, Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, and the former head of the Department of Food Science and Technology. He is a results driving and analytical professional with 15 years of experience leading research innovation and success across national, regional, and international projects in food science and technology. Also, among the panelists, we have Ade Runke Ade Oye who is an ICRA Netherlands trained agribusiness coach and certified experts in agribusiness finance from the Frankfurt School of Finance and Management, Germany. She is also trained as a global good agricultural practice firm assurer, which is the worldwide standard that ensures good agricultural value chains, equipping her to work with farmers, and other value chain players to supply premium markets. She has competence in developing agri-value chain financing, 
women and youth empowerment, with expertise also in community engagement, small scale manufacturing, community and stakeholder engagement. Uh, we also have in the panel of discussants, uh, a woman with a degree in food science, option in chemistry, from Stellenbosch University in South Africa. The name is Emma Phillips. She is currently employed as a culinary and snacks technologist at Main Flavors in Cape Town, South Africa. Her experience in the research and development sector includes flavor and seasoning development for the meat and meat analog, socks and condiments, as well as culinary and slang product categories. Now we want to go into the discussions. Uh, here we have various questions for the panelists to respond to. Each panelist has two minutes to respond to each of these questions. Uh, the first question is, what are the benefits of promoting university industry linkages? So the first person that will respond is from the academia, and this is Professor Abdurazak Adebowale. You are welcome. Hey, good afternoon, Professor Badino. Thank you for inviting me, and good afternoon to all participants. Well, part of the benefit that we can gain from university industry industry collaboration, we can foster innovative solutions to national problems and challenges through the R and D. Through R and D, then when industries and universities collaborate, universities have opportunity to know the demands and the needs of the industries. And by so doing, they can think around with their, with their curriculum and then produce the necessary skill manpower that the industry will need to propel their production forward. Industry academic collaboration will also enhance collaborative research between universities and the industries. And by so doing, we bring out more new products that the industry can now commercialize. And then through commercialization of those products, university researchers can also be able to get some additional income for their research and development activity within the university. It also helps to enrich the knowledge and the employability potentials of our graduates. Because by the time the universities and industries are together, the university can now have more practical orientation, which they can expose their students to. And there's also the possibility of students to go to these industries as intern and now gain some practical experience to complement their theories they gain from the classrooms. Also, I also very think that um, you have less than one minute. We have the opportunity of collaborative research. Like uh, Professor Yoli mentioned in his presentation, this will go away a long way in, in, in equipping our universities and also allow the industries to have access to research facilities and personnel that may be absent in the industries. This Thank is you. the benefit, I think. If there are other questions, I will throw more light on this. Thank you, Professor Adebowale. Uh, we want to listen to somebody from the industry now, and that is Emma Phillips to respond to the same question. What are the benefits of promoting university industry linkages? You have just two minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, and uh, a very big thank you for allowing me to participate today. I think the partnership and, and synergy between industry and academia is incredibly important. 
not only for economic growth, but also to achieve social goals, such as ensuring a sufficient food supply to our ever-growing population. I think a primary benefit would, would be the knowledge transfer and exchange of skills that occurs between the two parties. Corporates can leverage academic resources, research infrastructure, as well as highly skilled personnel through consultancy services. In turn, by partnering with industry, academia can benefit from technological skills, systems, processes, as well as business attitudes within the commercial envi environment. These partnerships can also allow for revenue generation, such as through the commercialization of new products, again, consultancy services, as well as research funding opportunities. From a human resources perspective, university industry linkages can create opportunities for the training and upskilling of staff members. Corporates can benefit from recruitment opportunities through engaging with faculty staff, as well as using academic communication channels to advertise job vacancies. University industry linkages can also act as a medium to enhance graduate employability by exposing our students to the working environment during their studies. We are not only creating an opportunity to learn on the job skills, but we are also providing a platform for our students to make industry connections and to Thank start you. building their professional networks early. Thank you. Thank you, Mark Phillips. Yeah. Uh, we want to move to another scholar from academia, and that is Dr. Mrs. Yemisi Jeff Agola to respond to the same question. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, Professor Badina, and thank you for inviting me here. Um, the benefits of promoting university industry in EKGs are very many. Um, we look at um, when university and industry collaborate, their collaboration play a very crucial role in technological catch-up, mostly for most developing countries. And we know the manufacturing and service companies can gain access to appropriate and cheaper technologies and become more competitive in the world marketplace. And on the other hand, university can improve their financial position and gain first-hand technological experience through these kind of linkages and successful university can become more entrepreneurial and play an active role in the economic development process and where there is some um, university industry linkages there will be improvement in teaching learning and um, enrichment of our uh, students students knowledge and their employability that is to say this kind of collaboration can also help in creating job opportunity for local people and also for students when they graduate. Uh, academians can also collaborate with industry in the areas of curriculum development. It helps to um, develop, I mean, it helps uh, in teaching and learning and also research development and also improve consultancy services and as well as securing suitable industrial placement for students as part of um, the tertiary institution's core responsibility. So this kind thank of collaboration. You, Dr. Jeff. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we also want to listen to another uh, industrial guru, and that is Aderunke Aderunke to respond to the same question. Thank you. She's Too many muted. points have been touched. No, um, oh no. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, so many points have been touched by all the other panelists, and I'll try not to repeat what they have said. But one of the major things we need to note is that for Africa to unlock its $3 trillion food market potential, it's very important for the numerous innovations, for numerous innovations to happen and to be commercialized across the agri-food value chain. And one of the things hampering this innovation is the major gaps widening that has been widening the poverty gap is the disconnect between universities and that is research and development and the industry. So there's a lot of research going on in the universities, but there's a gap between co in communication and synergy and interactions between the um, universities and the industry. Industry has always been known to be a significant catalyst for economic development job creation and for reducing poverty. 
Across Africa, there continues to be a huge disconnect between industry and research. It prevents us as a people from harnessing the full potential of the numerous resources we have on the continent, especially across the agri-food value chain. So promoting these linkages between university and industry, aside from being beneficial to the universities and the industry, will also lead to a huge reduction in food and raw materials for, for countries, for economies across Africa and trigger the establishment of more industries, which will lead to creation of employment, reduction of poverty, reduction in post-harvest losses, improved livelihoods, reduction in insecurity across many regions, and generally a boom in economic growth across the African continent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, the, the panelists have made us to know that there is need to promote linkages between university and industry. And they've made us to also realize that this Linkages, if promoted, will lead to one huge reduction of food and raw material import for industries across Africa, which will definitely trigger the establishment of more industries, which will lead to creation of employment, reduction of poverty, reduction in post harvest losses, improvement or improving livelihood, and reduction in insecurity across many region of the continent. Uh, they also uh, stated that the linkage uh, will also lead to knowledge transfer and exchange of skills between the two parties. Also, it can enhance collaborative research and commercialization of research outputs. Uh, it's also expected that the linkage can foster innovative solutions to the national problems and challenges, among many others. Thank you, the panelists. We want to go to this section two, uh, where we have another question for the panelists. And the question goes thus, what are the barriers to university industry linkages in Africa. The first person to respond to this question is from the academia, and that is Dr. Mrs. Yemic Jeff Agbola. You are welcome. Thank you so much, Professor Badina. Um, uh, in responding to the barriers to university industry linkages in Africa, I would like to so state that um, Oh, thank you very much. Um, one of the challenges is uh, one of the challenges to university industry linkages in Africa is um, the development of our curriculum. You now, most of our university curricula are developed in such a way that we don't give space and room to our uh, to the students to learn some things from the industry, except during the time they want to go out for their uh, internship. If, if the university can uh, identify um, um, uh, the spaces that these students need, it will help them a lot. So, you know, and another barrier like for university to identify the young, bright entrepreneurs, that people that have entrepreneurial spirit, it will go a very long way in assisting the university. So the barrier happens to be the curriculum developments, which did not include um, facilities or collaboration for fa faculties, students, and industrial relationship. And another barrier is um, in, uh, lack of mentoring uh, mentors in these um, institutions for these students and from industries. So this lack of industrial mentors that we work with faculties and students in order to enhance student maturity. Majority of the students when they graduate because they don't really have much exposure in the industry, uh, industrial activities. So by the time they graduate, they, they have challenges in establishing collaboration, I mean communication. And so this affects the job market. So the barrier starts Thank from you. the um, curriculum 
development. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jeff Arbola. Uh, I'm also throwing the same question to Ms. Aderonke Aderonke from the industry. What are the barriers to university industry linkages in Africa? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so one of the major barriers, I believe, to university industry linkages in Africa is drawing a reference from my experience in Nigeria is funding models for research and innovation. The Nigerian universities are funded primarily the Nigerian universities are funded primarily by the federal government, which have no inkling what the real challenges of the industries are. Secondly, the curriculum across most uh, universities do not encourage industry relevant research, and industries also do not look to universities to solutions for challenges faced by them because they are ill equipped as the universities in terms of equipment and human resources to find solutions to the challenges they are facing in 2021. So there's also a lack of entrepreneurial drive and desire to see innovation that eventually, when event that if they eventually happen, to be made available to the public for benefit. So, for example, universities. I find that a lot of universities have, have come up with certain innovations, but these innovations don't get past the research um, walls, the university walls. They are not transmitted to the public for for commercialization because there are no avenues for interaction and um, interaction and knowledge sharing that cuts across industry and universities. Most of the um, knowledge sharing happens within the university space or within the industry space. There's no interaction across both sectors. And so in some instances, um, even with great ideas and research results we find that these results these results don't get to the industries that commercialize it and trigger the sort of change we need in the sector a lot thank of times you. also <clears throat> thank, no thank you thank you uh, we also want to hear from professor abdrazik adipoali on the same issue of barriers to investing in industry linkages in africa thank you prof well, well, thank you. All of the all of the key barrier is trust issues. Trust. The internal of the industry will tell you that they have tried it before. They put money down. The university did not deliver. When you ask, when you inter interact with the university, they will say, "Well, industries wanted to pick their IP for free." So there is this trust issues between the industry and the academia, particularly on the use of the research findings. And that's what they've told to what I can refer to as conflict of interest. Many academia today in Africa, including Nigeria, they are promoted based on the number of publications they have. So it means that when academics engage in research, they want to, as quick as possible, publish their findings. Well, industry, in other, in other, in other end, are reluctant because they want to get the IP rights to that result. So when the academic want to publish, industries want to delay the process of letting this information out so that they own the intellectual property rights. So these are, this is what I refer to as conflict of interest. And of course, another thing is lack of experience within the rank and file of the academia in terms of industrial relations. And then the load, the workload at the moment in African universities, in terms of teaching, are taking part of the time of the academy. So many of them are asked this ap apathy to even think of collaborating with industries. They still are have enough to go to classes. Yeah. So, and then industries too, many of them doesn't have the interest in collaborating with universities. So these are barriers. Okay, and it's mostly okay bro, thank you. Thank you for your contributions, thank you. So the, our panelists have made us to realize that following are the barriers to this industry university linkages. One, funding of models for research and innovation. Two, that there is problem of curriculum across most universities, which do not encourage industry research or industry relevant research. They also made us to know that there's lack of industrial mentors that I work with faculty, faculties and students in order to enhance students' 
maturity skills in another challenge. Uh, the issue of trust between industry and university was also stressed. And lastly, lack of interest by industrialists to have linkages with the university. Thank you. Uh, we are going to the next discussion uh, point, but this time around, we're going to limit our responses to one minute each from the uh, panelists. The next question is, how can university industry linkages benefit the students? How can university industry linkages benefit the students? So I will start with Professor Abdurazak Adibali, one minute, thank you. One of the key problems we have identified in Africa today is the issue of unemployment. And this also dovetails to the fact that our universities are actually dishing out students with the required skills that, are, that will be employed by the industries. So if there are good collaboration and synergy between the university and the industry, it's going to enhance the employability of our graduates. It's also going to enhance the teamwork and critical thinking and communication skills of our graduates. Because by the time they have exposure to the industries, these skills will be imparted in them. We, by introducing some of this, also help to increase the industrial exposure of our students. Because many things we are taking in the class and in laboratories is another ball game when you come to the practical reality at the industrial level. So Thank the students you, will gain a lot from the industry collaboration in terms of skill development. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, Emma Phillips, can we hear your response to this question? Thank you. Thank you. I, I second what, what Prof Adebuyole has, has said. I find it tremendously beneficial and, and relevant for students to receive industry exposure during their studies. It not only provides them with insight into the working world, but it increases their employability and really does allow them to create and start building their professional networks at a young age. So for undergraduate students, this, this exposure could include in-service training, um, which would form uh, as a mandatory course requirement for their degree, um, visits and lectures from industry professionals, uh, vacation work and internships, um, the tailoring of undergraduate courses with input from industry professionals, um, R&D final year project assignments, as well as uh, student company visits. For postgraduate students, yeah, uh, faculty, you, faculty staff can take up sabbatical work and gain experience thank in you. the business environment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we've noted your point. Uh, let's also listen to Dr. Jeff Agbola on how can university industry linkages with the students. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, uh, to look at how university industry linkages can benefit the students, uh, since we know that university is widely viewed as economic engine that can positively contribute to companies' growth, so the linkages can raise the employability of students. And it can lead to um, creation of inno innovative um, innovation hubs, development centers when they collaborate together. And this such collaboration between university and industry in curricular development process can, can help to produce well-equipped graduates that could fit into the world of works. And the inclusion of industry in the realization of these activities in all phases of curriculum design create possibilities for a more successful cooperation with universities. So it will help to develop a lot of innovative uh, innovation centers, uh, whereby the students, when they graduate, they will just go there. And um, since they have been involved in all these activities while they're in school, this will also help them and it will assist the economic development of the country too. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Adirunke Adirunke. Can we get your okay. response to this question? Thank you. Yes, so I think one of the major things that this, um, aside from the many points, valid points that other panelists have raised, is that um, 
these interactions can lead to also a, a trigger of um, a new set of entrepreneurs. Who have a clear understanding aside from even just research solutions. So for example, you know, as a student that has done an internship or has interacted or has worked closely with an industry and come up with an innovation that the industry will use, they have the foresight to know that once this innovation comes on steam, there are other allied and ancillary services that this industry would need that I, be I can begin to plug into. So the point is, it, it leads to a ripple effect, aside from, you know, making them employable and boosting economic growth. It also creates a new wave of entrepreneurs that have access to real-time data and problem solving that they can use to create businesses and um, solutions that cut across industry. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, our panelists uh, made us to realize that there are a lot of benefits for this type of collaboration between the university and the industry. And uh, the mention that these linkages will definitely raise the opportunity for students internship. Uh, they also make us to realize that it will be an, op an opportunity for vacation work by the student during the halls. Uh, also that it can be tailored towards university courses, which include input from industry practitioners in teaching assignments. And lastly, is that R&D of student project collaboration and industry mentorship can also be developed. Thank you. Uh, the third section is where we're going to be looking at uh, how can research be enhanced through university industry linkages? Because this issue has been mentioned earlier. So uh, we're going to start with Professor Adeboale one minute. How can research be enhanced through university industry linkages? Thank you. Well, well, definitely, definitely, there could be there, there will be more proper more, more proper funding because I know many industries will, have, will be able to put some money down for the researchers to do their cross cutting cross cutting edge research and demand driven research that will address national problems. Then it's it's also possible to now try to make a paradigm shift from a promotion criteria that is skilled to publications to one that is skilled to how much IP you're able to generate, technology transfer, how much of your research are you able to commercialize. And that's we enhance and enrich our research outputs. Then industry also sponsor professor chairs at the university level. And professor chairs they enhance the scientists, also enhance the students. Then there have also be creation of mobility schemes between the industry and the university. University staff can go to the industry, industry staff can go to university and now work in their environment, exchange ideas, change of idea thinking Thank and maybe enhance greatly our research output from the universities. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Uh, Ima, can we listen to your, your own uh, contribution towards this. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. And and uh, again, echo what Prof Adeyobole has said. Um, research can be enhanced through, through really the synergistic relationship between industry and academia through various practices. And, and these practices would include uh, promoting collaboration through joint research and contract research projects, through the funding and, and sponsorship of research projects from government and industry, for academia to share equipment and literature resources, and for industry to really share their market insights and, and business related skills and competencies, to provide academia with market and economic demands, which, which may create new avenues for, for research. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ima. Uh, Dr. Jeff Aguala. Yeah, thank you very much, Prof. Um, research. Um, can be enhanced through university and industrial linkages because um, if this, the two institutions can come together to develop innovative curriculum. Now, number one, you know, these universities have uh, regu regulatory bodies that regulate their curriculum. So they really need to 
come together and um, uh, discuss about how industries can also be center of discussion in curriculum development as well. And so when they do this, it will help uh, the two institutions to be able to develop an innovative curriculum. And again, um, we should not just do it alone. Universities should not do it alone. They should also carry students along. That should be, they should listen to students and listening to students we assist and again so that we'll be able to know the innovative ideas that these students have and the university institutions the two institutions should prioritize research when they prioritize research it will help so university thank strategies you. Thank should, you. okay thank you thank you Mark. thank you yeah uh miss i didn't care anyway what is your okay, view so, of today's <laughs> so my view is um there's a need because, you know, um, to drive the economic growth we need in Africa, you know, we need to engage in this um, linkages. We need to drive these linkages to happen. And in addition to what the United panelists have said, I was, I'll say one of the major things that I need to look, we look, need to look into is review the funding models of universities. You know, there has to be a review of that. Incentives need to be given to industries that fund research by government. That's another way government can begin to drive innovation and interactions. Forums need to be created that enable interactions between the industries and academia for exchange of knowledge, exchange of research results, and also exchange of problems that the, 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 the universities can begin to research on. And, you know, and how the results can even be adapted to the, to the problems that industries are facing at the moment. And members of the academia should also explore doing sabbatical in industry. And, you know, instead of, you know, constantly, because most times it's done in other universities, there should be a way that this can also be done in industries as well, not just for students, but also members of the academia. Um, yeah, in summary, Thank it's you. just a need for an intentional handshake between the universities and the industry, basically. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The panelists make us to realize that there's need for an intentional handshake between universities and industries. Uh, they also mentioned the issue of sponsor of professional chair by the industry and the issue of investment in research. Between these two collaboration was also emphasized. And they also mentioned the creation of mobility scheme or program that will mobilize university faculty members and industry personnel to work in each other's environment. Thank you very much. Uh, we want to move to the fourth section. And here we have a question that goes thus. What can universities do to make industry to benefit from university industry linkages? I will come again. What can universities do to make industry to benefit from university industry linkages? Uh, at this section, we're going to limit the responses to people in academia. And we are starting with Professor Adebowale. One minute, please. Well, thank you. I, I strongly feel that the starting point is for the university to do what I refer to as demand driven and quality research so that industry could be attracted. But if you just do what you feel is research that industry doesn't need, there's no way they won't come to the universities. And that would dovetail to the universities establishing what, what can be referred to as university industry lesson office. And this will be the bridge between university authority and the management of the industries. And one of the main key objectives of that lesson office is to reduce the bureaucracy within the university system that makes things more cumbersome for the industrialists. Because industrialists want the result at a very high speed. Universities have some encumbrances, some protocols they have to follow. This has to be played down such that this industry, the things can move at a speed at which industries can, can be interested in partnering with us. Then there has to be a good and robust communication channel from the university to the industries. And also think that one of the ways you can gain the 
the confidence of the industry or interest of the industry is to participate in exhibitions where we can showcase our research findings or outputs and bring all these industrial stakeholders, let them see what you are doing. There are many findings in universities that could be commercialized, but they are not aware. So apart from university organizing exhibitions within the university, university can also go and attend national, regional, and international exhibitions organized by the industrialists or some government agencies to showcase you, their research findings so that industries could be, could be aware of the potentials and what they can actually come and tap within the universities. If Thank can you, bro. Thank you. Uh, we also want to listen to Dr. Jeff Abola. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, university can create some innovation centers. Now, if university creates innovation centers, innovation hubs, where they can encourage businesses to collaborate with the university to utilize the academic expertise, it's very, very important. This will draw industries to university. And so university should strengthen their research and development centers. This will help to partner with industry to create um, industrial policies. There should be industrial policies which can actually grow the individual as an holistic person in 21st century. So is these policies that will really help the, two, um, the university to develop. And in creating innovators, we should have the faculty, the university should have faculty student companies innovation team. It's very, very important we have those teams and also industrial mentors. This will help university to, to be able to scale up, I mean, to create the industrial hubs that we're talking about, the uh, can be national incubation centers. And this will help university uh, thank to you. give the right thank you. to it's students. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the scholars have made us to realize that there's need for university to create license offices, innovation hubs where they can encourage businesses to collaborate with universities. They also made us to know that there's need to create innovators which should have faculty, student, companies, innovation team, and industrial mentors. These are noted. Uh, the university should conduct demand-driven and quality research. And lastly, that there should be effective communication channels with industry um, publications. So thank you. Uh, the next questions are for the people in the industries. And the question goes thus, what are the expectations of industries from universities when they are into linkages? So we're going to listen to Dr. Aderonke Aderinoye. Thank you. Aderonke Aderinoye, you are muted. Okay, uh, Ima, maybe you go first. What are the expectations of industries from universities when they are into linkages? Absolutely, great. So corporates consider an attractive hire who is someone who is well-rounded in both their technical and their soft skill set. Um, we find now that corporates are investing significant efforts into promoting a work-happy environment as happy teams are successful teams. So at MAN, we undergo personality testing and emotional intelligence testing, which really does allow us to understand who we are and how we fit into and communicate within our team. So it's these team skills and, and interpersonal skills which are vital in today's corporate climate. So over and above possessing a strong technical skill set in research, industries really expect students to, to uh, possess good communication skills, good listening skills, to be able to take initiative, to be a good team player, to show commitment and to bring a positive attitude to work, and also to display a keen interest to learn and to show curiosity. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ima. Uh, well, Ima have made us to realize that the industries are looking for students uh, that have a good quality uh, and someone who is well-rounded in both technical and soft skill sets. 
Uh, she also made us to know that there is need for improvement in the quality of graduates being shown out by the universities so that they are better equipped to take on the challenges in the ever evolving workforce. Thank you, Ima. Uh, the next question is a question for all the panelists. And the question is that each one of them should give examples of best practices. That is, how is it being done in their own establishment, either in the universities or in the industry? These type of linkages that we are talking about, how is it being done in your organization? We're going to listen firstly to Professor Adebuale. One minute, please. Well, uh, thank you, Professor Badino. One of the things that we are doing in FUNAP is to have what to refer to as industrial park. In that industrial park, we have successfully commercialized some of our research outputs, and it's already at business scale, which we are, which is available for the university community to purchase and also the outsider. So that's one thing we are doing, and many the industry like industrially that is just said of our campus can come and see what we are doing in that area. Though the scale is still at minimal level, but at least we are in business. And we have something to show to the industry that we are able to commercialize some of our outputs. So sometimes- Thank you. Do... Thank you, Professor Adibali. I think you've given us a nice example. Uh, let's also listen to Emma Phillips. Thank you. So at Mount and Cape Town here in South Africa, we have a keen interest in promoting these linkages. Um, and these are done through our student internships and our R&D, QC and QA teams. We partner with academia with our R&D strategic development projects. Um, on the marketing front, we consult academia for support in research methodologies and consumer trend insights. We leverage our greater network of local universities to connect with their partners abroad um, for area specific knowledge and, and business contacts. Our staff are involved in industry associations, and it's these associations that we support through the sponsorship of congresses. Uh, we support student R&D days, and we encourage our employees. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Emma. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can we also listen to Dr. Jeff Agola, how it's been done in your organization? Thank you so very much, uh, Professor Badina. Like in my university, we have um, some people that have um, a collaborative project with some industries. So they move down to the industries to present the proposal. So the industry will have input on how they want to come in so that they, they can also uh, bring the student along. There is a kind of discussion flow between the uh, principal investigator of the proposal alongside with students that they're working going to work together and industrialist. And again, in our institution, we partner with industries for student industrial internship placements. So most of the time we send our students to these industries to gain first-hand information and knowledge about our uh, collaboration. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Uh, we also want to listen to Ms. Adelonke Adeni Oye. Okay, um, thank you. So um, the way we have worked was we worked with the university to develop and view our recipes, taking the various rest, um, outputs we got from the various um, iterations we got at the university to the marketplace and consumers and providing feedback to keep for the researchers in the universities to keep working until there was a um, handshake, there was a satisfactory product developed that was favorable to both the consumers and the commercialization of the product. Another best practice that I have also seen is the creation of certain funds by industry to fund research into some industry relevant challenges so that this can be reviewed annually at forums and discussions on the results on applications to the industry. Basically. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, our panelists have made us to know that in their own various organizations, they are, they are developing and reviewing their recipes with the university, taking the review output to the consumers and marketplace by providing feedback to the university to keep working so they are able to create products and the consumers who are satisfied. 
The issue of handshake with the university was also stressed, which has helped to reduce the amount of time and investment that would have been made in the process of product development. Uh, we are also made to realize that some of these organizations create certain funds, which is by the company to fund research into some of the industry relevant challenges. Uh, we are also made to know that some of these organizations have been trying to involve their staff in industry associations. And they also support them through uh, conferences, students R&D research days and employee volunteership. Thank you, our participants. Uh, we are moving gradually. So we are now at the last part of the session where we need to talk about data in Africa. So the question goes thus, what uh, uh, is the data needed in Africa to be able to support policy decisions related to enhanced university industry collaboration? Uh, yeah, I'm Professor Bajun, probably before we go to this session, let me announce to the audience that the audience can raise questions and they can also make contributions. Please, if you have questions based on the contributions made by panelists, you can place your questions on the chat uh, section of this platform. In addition, when, I, when we get question and a session, you are free to raise up your hands on the platform so that it can be called upon. Please make choose of the chat section. I've seen that two people have already placed questions there. Let others who are interested be available to, I mean, ready to make their contribution. Professor Eole, it's the Q&A uh, option. Yes, the Q and A option, please. Thanks. There's a Q and A option where you can raise your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Prof, for that uh, valuable information, sir. Uh, the panelists, just as a guide on this section, uh, you are allowed to address the question in the following ways. One, what data or information is needed in Africa to be able to better support policy decisions related, related to enhanced university industry collaboration? That is one. Two, is that do we have data in our countries and in our institutions or industries that can help to formulate policies on industry university collaboration. Number three, what good practices in collecting, publishing, and the use of current data that is available for policy formulation can you present in your country or company? Lastly, how can we ensure that the data is comparable across Africa? So I want you to respond. I'm going to call you one after the other. Just one more minute. Thank you. Uh, Professor Adibale. Well, thank you. We, in terms of information needed to support policy decisions, we have to now have what are the capacities of the universities, for instance. If you're able to know what, what are the capacity, what they can do, what they have in stock to offer, so if they have that data, you can know where industries can come in. And also vice versa. What are the industrial needs in terms of R&D? What are the challenges they are facing that scientists can come in and, and resolve? And then in terms of the policy that can help to, to enhance the collaboration of partnership, this has to go to the policy makers and that's to go to some of the regulators of the in Nigeria, for instance, the IUC, has to find a way of incorporating some of these policies that can, that can streamline or make more easier partnering between university and the industry. So if that is Thank done, you, Professor. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ima Philip, can you contribute to these questions? Yes, thank you. So we have discussed a multitude of, of benefits and barriers today, and, and these are incredibly broad. And as we know, data collection requires some focus. 
So if we want to understand more about our linkages, uh, perhaps in R&D or in human resources, I think we really just need to assess our best practices and, and decide which of these can be measured and how we can assign uh, measurables and metrics to these. So I would suggest creating a framework around these best practices um, and this will help us to understand what data is required and, and what data is useful for policy decision making. Um, so for example, the collaboration of industry with academia on R&D projects, I can think of certain metrics, annual research budgets, percentage investment in, in, in annual R&D activities, the number of R&D projects requiring academic uh, uh, collaboration, the percentage of project wins which involve academic collaboration and, and the list really goes on. Um, so as I said- Thank you. Thank you, Ima. Thank you. Uh, we also want to listen to Dr. Jeff Agola. Thank you, Professor Badina. Yeah, in all these things that we have said for industries and um, university to collaborate, we really need um, we really need to have information <clears throat> about the needs of the industry and also the needs of the institution. There are some missing gaps. If these missing gaps can be addressed, there will be better collaboration between the industry and uh, the university. And so, how do we get this data? And then uh, we can get this data maybe the, through the use of questionnaires. We can have questionnaires as um, part of what we're going to use to get this survey done. Yeah, and when we get our survey, I mean questionnaires, these questionnaires will be able to help us to develop the next approach to what we want to do in terms of maybe we want to write policy brief for those people that are writing policy so that we can be able to harmonize this. So, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Doc. Uh, Ms. Adele, oh yeah. your contribution, please. Thank you very much. Uh, so what I'll just say in addition to what has been said is there needs to be a collation of where we are now. Okay, so the current institutions that are present, what are, what are they capable of doing? What kind of research, what kind of resources and expertise is currently available? Um, what kind of uh, equipment and facilities do they currently possess? We need to have that database somewhere that is accessible. Then we also need to find a way of also documenting the kind of problems that the industry is having now. What are the industry trends? What are the things that are going to evolve and happen across various industries that need um, innovative solutions to be developed now? Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you because of our time. Uh, let me also at this juncture invite Professor Oyewole to make contribution to this section. Yes, I will want to add that we will need data on the skills that the industry expects our graduates to possess. This will, this information will further enhance collaboration with the industry. Another data that will be necessary will be the facilities that are available in the universities and facilities that are available in the industry. This information or data needs to be made public so that when they are public, if they are public, then the university, the industry know where to go to get what they require for their work. Funding has been emphasized all our discussions. As of today, if you get to many African countries, we do not have information on available funding that can support industry, academia, research work. It is necessary that we have data on funds provided by the government and even internal funds that can be sourced within the industry itself. This type of information is very critical to promote academia industrial collaboration. And lastly, one contending issue in this collaboration is that of trust, especially trust that are connected with intellectual properties of the outcome of the research work. I believe that we need to, in every nation, issue about intellectual property, the process of going about it, who should own it, 
and which should lay claim to it at any time should be made available to the general public. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Iwale, for the contribution. And I also want to thank the panelists. Uh, in summary, the panelists made us to realize that data, uh, that we need data in the industries and also in the university. And the data needed in the industries are one, needs of the industries, how are they distributed in terms of these needs? Impact of solution to some of these problems faced by these industries. Uh, four, student internship in different sections within the industry. We need data on this. Partner uh, with academia for research and development strategic government projects are also needed. Uh, we also need data on involvement of staff and industry association. Also data on sponsoring of student projects, both undergrad and postgrad by the industries. And facilities available within the industry. We are also made to know that we need to know what are the equipment available also in the universities? What are the type of research that each university is able to carry out? And how much will they require to upgrade the research facilities within the universities? We also need to know uh, the consumer, the needs of the consumers that is by the university so that this can guide in the type of research that we also go into. And lastly, the capacity of the universities will need to also get data on this. Uh, thank you, all the panelists. We have really learned a lot from your contributions. And the section that we are moving to now will be coordinated by Professor Oyewole. And this is the questions from the audience and contributions. Thank you. Yeah. Just to note, is Akio on? Yes, oh. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. Okay. You taking this section? Yes. Yeah, I'm looking at the QA okay. section. Yes. Okay, over to you. Okay, so um, on the QA section, we have a few questions that I will read out and let the panelists then be able to respond to them. Uh, one of them is uh, the question related to, just one second, what does, the, what does the university need to do to restore trust by industry stakeholders? This is in terms of funding. Uh, the universities have been missing out on some funding for the time being. There's a missing link between industry and university. So the question the attendee is raising is, what should the universities do to um, enable uh, industries to give more funding to the universities for research? That's one of the questions. Should I read out another question or the panelists will respond to that first? No. Let, let's take the first one. Panelists can respond. Okay. Any of the panelists can come in. I, I, I think the uh, person... Hello? Yes. Yes. Well, I, I, I thought it is asking what the industries are doing. So some of the industrialists can help us. But as far as the university is concerned, what you can do is to deliver. So if you, if you have research funds from industries and you deliver based on the proposal and the TOR, then they will, they will trust you to bring another one. But if you collect their funds, you don't deliver on their TOR, they won't, the trust issue will still be there. So I need from university perspective, what we need to do is to deliver or any grants or fund we got from the industries to the best of our ability and meet their demands, then they will come back. Uh, I think Prof, Prof is actually very accurate because that's just the major challenge. I've had instances like he had articulated where funds were made available for, for certain research projects and the results were not um, encouraging. So I think more and more, there's a need to show a genuine willingness because across businesses, like even across other relationships and partnerships, once a pain point of the other person can be met, 
I don't think there's anything he greedy person from parting with money because if it's if it's either ensuring that wastage is reduced or more re revenue is generated and um, or, 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 or more growth happens, more customer acquisition happens, then the industry is willing to work at all times. So what's actually critically important is are the results coming out? Are the universities willing to produce the results required? Basically? Yeah. I would like to contribute the to The need that. for openness. Openness on both sides of the industry and the academ academia. Uh, we should promote more accountability. <laughs> and I also want to add that the industry will be happy if there is value for the funds that are being invested into research in the industry. So the university researchers should ensure that they deliver on the funds that have been support that have been made available to support their research work. Thank you. Okay, oh, yes, can I contribute to that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for, for okay. Okay, for university to have um for industries to have more trust on university, I think it would be better for most universities, whenever they want to collaborate with our uh, industries, they should set up monitoring and evaluation committee. And then this committee should, um, the, the committee members should also include um, industry industrial members in which they meet regularly to talk about the progress of the proposed project and also alongside when the project is going on. This will really help to have more trust in university partnership with industries. Thank you. Okay. Over to Apio. Yeah. Okay. So the next question <coughs> is um, um, what, in terms of the national outlook of, of you, the university system. So the question is what at the national level is the university system doing to link student entrepreneurship education to commercialization vis a vis students setting up their own industries? Did you get my can question? I? Can I try? Or you want to take? You got it. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Okay. I think what we are doing in my university, we have what we call Center for Entrepreneurial Studies, and here we have startups where we train the students on some of these skills and also follow it up to empowering them to start up. From somewhere, and we are collaboratively. We have a collaboration with uh, GIZ, the JAMA Agency for International Development, who for some of the training session, and even give the some of the potential entrepreneurs some seed seed money to start up their business. So that's one leg. Another leg we are doing, like the sample person you already cited, is to bring these students together as a group. We give them little amount of money, so particularly during their industrial training experience which, which lasts over six months. So they pick a particular product, produce, sell it, then they, they recoup the money like that, like that. Whatever they're able to gather as extra goes to them at the end of the exercise to just uh, encourage them into entrepreneurship. So those are all the efforts we are doing in Funa. Okay, any other panelists want to take that question? Yeah, just, just let me also give this example that we were doing just some years ago. There is this national research fairs where universities are invited to a research fair for them to display the type of research what they've done that industries can pick up. I hope that we'll be able to continue with this type of research fair. It's an opportunity to invite industries to come and see what is happening in the universities. When this type of thing is encouraged in various countries of Africa, I think that the collaboration between the academia and industry will be further enhanced. Thank you. Um, so what I would also like to say is that industries currently have so many platforms where they meet at the moment. And academia can make a conscious effort to be part of those industrial affairs as well. Um, 
a lot of times, you know, it's, it's important, like I said, for there to be an inten intentional desire to handshake. Um, when, in, when academia make, um, have academic fairs and things like that, most times the communication, advertisement and publicity doesn't get into the industrial circles. Those for industry as well may, may get into the academic circles, but not, may not get as far as you know, the academia to, to circulate. So there's an intent, there has to be an intentional way. What are the industrial um, fairs and shows that industries do? How can academia begin to take a stand in those places to display, have slots to speak and exhibit what they have available and what is possible and interact with this um, industrial um. Okay. 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 Any other panelists want to test on that question or I move on to the next? Yeah. What I would like to say is that um, when we talk about entrepreneurship, people think like uh, it's, uh, it's all about business idea. And what, um, most, what we are doing, most especially in our universities, to identify innovative ideas entrepreneurship is not just making money or what have you entrepreneurship is creativity entrepreneurship is innovation it's um identify creative ideas and how can these ideas be um but i mean taken down to commercialization it is number one what we do and what we have done before we do a, a kind of uh, there is something we call role modeling events whereby we identify the people that want to um, present and uh, maybe they want to have some fairs, maybe science fair, whereby they have developed something and then we bring out industries and um, the, the people in the society to see what we are doing and identify and partner with people to assist students to be able to scale up what they are doing to commercialization. So it's not just entrepreneurship. Everybody, almost all universities have entrepreneurship projects they are doing, but we really need to identify few students in our institutions that, have, that are innovative, that are creative, and we can scale up what they are doing and link them up with uh, people in the society to be able to move forward to commercialization. Thank you. Okay. Okay, anybody else has want to add something? If not, I'll, if not, I'll move on to the next question. And this is um, a question related to the benefits of industry academia uh, collaboration. So the question the person is raising is who benefits, the individual or the university in terms of um, uh, a research that is being funded by industry? Yes, anyone wants to take this? Well, well, it depends on the depends on the agreement. Mm -hmm. Some funding agencies compensate the researcher with some little allowances here and there. Some agency will only give you fund for the activity and then some fund to take care of invest overhead, you know, utilities, payment of utilities and the rest and the rest. Then but in the long run. It's a win-win situation. So because the benefit transcends the financial, express is there, publications are there. But this must be asked to be spelled out in the contract agreement, exactly when it comes to who owns the IP rights. So there has to be spelled from the beginning. There are some IP rights that is shared between the scientists and the donor. There are some that the donors will say, whatever you are coming up with is our own. But this must be stated from the beginning so that the two parties is in agreement. And there are some instances to, if you are able to purchase any equipment, some donors which after the project, that equipment, equipment becomes the property of the university. Some will say the equipment becomes the property of the principal investigator. So it varies from one donor to the other, and from university to the other. But what's important is from the beginning of the engagement, this has to be clearly spelled out and it must be adhered to by the all parties involved. Thank you. Yeah, I will also add that one important thing we should take home from this discussion is that before 
there should be there could be collaboration between industry and the universities. There should be a formal agreement where the benefits and who should own the benefits are clearly stated, or where the uh, outputs of the research can be shared. If there's a an agreement, written agreement or an agreement between those parties, that agreement, such a could have taken care of who benefits from such collaboration. I know that in some universities, there have been challenges. Should the benefits of such collaboration go to the university or go to the researchers that are involved in the research work itself? I think that these are things that should have been set out in agreement for such collaboration. Thank you. Okay, um, in order to also contribute to that, I, I just like this discussion. I observe that most of the time when we have research with industries in, in most institutions, I observe that industries benefit more because we just develop products for them and you know they pay, they will pay, but they take up the product and start making um, a lot of money from it. I could remember one particular product that I developed with uh, an organization in the U.S. You know, I just went there, they fund all my activities in the U.S. and all that. But today, the product is all over the world. So they benefit more. So with this, that's uh, what um, the last speaker has said. It's better. Now, most of our research, what we do with our research, with our publications in the universities, just for promotion and just for just for promotion, we should we, we, we should make our research, our paper, our publications to go beyond just for promotion. It should, it should go to commercialization level. So it, this agreement needs to be spelled out, not only for promotion, not only for, 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 for uh, maybe fellowship opportunity, but for joint agreement. I mean, there should be joint agreement in that, okay, when you make uh, this is the, the percentage you're going to, uh, uh, there should be percentage uh, gain uh, I don't really know how to put it, for the both parties, for, for those people that contribute, when you're making gain, how much goes into your purse? This, all these things need to be spelled out. University too needs to really benefit, not only at the end of the project, everything will terminate and the uh, industry will start benefiting while university will finish the assignment and there should be greater benefits, mutual benefit between all the uh, parties involved in all this project. Thank you. Okay. Any other panelists want to take on that? Okay, so then uh, I'll go on to the next question. And this is related with the curriculum. So how can university or government change the model of funding where the industry contributes more to demand-driven research outputs at the university? So the, the um, discussant is asking what, what needs to be changed? What type of model should we use? Um, in relation to what Yemisi has just said, so that we end up having more demand-driven research, but at the same time also considering the benefits. And if panelist is taking on this, or do I read it again? Yes? I think you should read it again. Okay, how can the university or government change the model of funding where the industry contributes more to demand-driven research outputs at the university? Okay, so basically, um, like, it, it still boils down to everything. I mean, there's no one straight jacket way to do all this, but it's, it's a function, it's a smooth snowball effect at the end of the day. And like I had mentioned earlier, there are, very, there are very many innovative funding models that could be developed to, to meet these needs, depending on the industry and depending on the university in question. Some industries have more weight in terms of funding than the others, some, some don't. So it will have to be um, tailor-made to what industries in particular. But in terms of ensuring, I think the focus should not be ensuring that most of the funding comes from industry, but ensuring that most of the research is applicable and commercial, commercializable and usable by the industry. So because the funding could come from NGOs, the funding could come from private individuals, the funding could come from development agencies. But what's important is that there's constantly innovation and research being churned out that is relevant to the very current and present needs 
of the of the of the industry. So, and I think what happens at the end of the day is once one or two collaborations happen and the successes are seen and glaring, it triggers more and more collaborations. I think that's what just happens at the end of the day. There's just this snowball effect. Oh, it's 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 more pro profitable. It's more productive to research with this in these universities to get these results out because it reduces our cost of R&D and at the same time is delivering results to us that is increasing our bottom line. If you do the first one and it delivers results, you, you don't need to convince them to do another one to deliver results. It keeps coming on and on and everyone, it becomes an industry standard at the end of the day. So I think what's most important, and I think the other part is for government to be also incentivized um, industries to fund research as well. So the way the tax breaks for certain things, there might be some incentives given to these universe to these industries for, you know, um, funding research in universities that drive innovation and growth in the economy, basically. Okay. Uh, Professor Yawele, you want to say something? No, I have to note that we have less than five minutes to go. Probably we just take one more question before we round up. Actually, like I've gone through the question. So the last one I want to address to you, Professor Yewele, because you had um, featured it in your presentation. So the person is asking, how can we encourage curriculum changes to suit, to suit the needs of consumers and the industry? So relating this to what ECHO has just also um, said. So yes. what, what, what should we do to encourage? Let's go repeat. Yeah. The, the the universities should involve or incorporate the people in the industry in their academic board and allow them to make contributions to the development of the And then the university should also make itself available. I mean, learn, I mean, learn to receive feedback the industries on the products coming out from the universities. When this type of feedback is enhanced, and where we have people in the industry being part of the academy of universities, we'll be able to get the inputs of the industry. Universities. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, thank you for that. Uh, maybe I'll just throw one question to all panelists to say one word in relation to how do we go forward from here in terms of policy in this particular area? to enable and enhance our university and industry collaboration. What, how do we go forward? What is the next step? What do you think should be our next step to make this more fruitful? <laughs> Somebody raised a question yes. and the question is, what do we plan to do with the community of this particular session? Yes. I think one, from this particular panel discussion, we are going to write a report and make the report available to the public. That is one very important thing. And the other thing is that the, uh, the recommendation we've made on this panel should also be made to our national, national governments. When governments are aware of this recommendation, I think that they will necessary action. On the part of the universities, we can play our own roles by intentionally incorporating people in the industry into our academic board. Thank you. Um, okay. So personally, I also think the report can be shared across um, industry-wide um, platforms, like the Chambers of Commerce, Manufacturers Associations, um, um, Trade Associations, and all that, where a lot of this industry decision makers also play. So aside from just sharing it with governments and making it public, we should also intentionally look for these associations and groups to and policy groups as well to share these recommendations with that could also take actions on this thing. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, in my own uh, recommendation, I would like to say that this discussion should not just end here. The discussion should continue. It is when this discussion continues that we'll be able to uh, know what next to, to be done aside the sharing of this communique. This, our team should still continue. I, I guess with this, we'll be able to be, develop a policy brief to the government on this. Thank you.
Thank you. Emma, do you want to say something? Yes, absolutely. We need to continue this discussion and, you know, involve uh, institution heads and, and, and senior leadership uh, members, industry associations, another great way um, to get gain traction on these efforts. Um, I'm a member of SAFOS, the South African Association for Food Science and Technology. And these are frequent topics that we, we speak about. Um, and then again, just utilizing this forum, a centralized forum for sharing area specific learnings. Um, I'm a, a strong believer in in learning from what's, what works and how we can translate that to other parts of our, of our continent. So very, very exciting things ahead. I think today has been a, a fruitful session and most definitely needed. I look forward to, to future discussions with you all. Okay, thank you so much. Abdul, you want to say something? Well, I, well, I think that I agree with others that the engagement continues. And then we need to bring in more, more stakeholders in the educational, higher institutional sector. And I, I want it to be more of regional efforts than national, which can now be stepped down by each national. There'll be regional efforts coming together and see how we can strengthen this industrial, industrial and university partnership. And I know that we have a lot of things to learn from South Africa, which we can leverage on as a startup, but the engagement should continue. And let's involve in general ads, like as earlier established. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Or Badina, or your mic is muted. Yeah, thank you. I also agreed with all the panelists and with their submission. And to also say that we need to take this up from here. How are we going to do that? CESA, I know, have another agenda. The AAU meetings is coming soon next. We're going to have head of institutions, the communique, the report of this uh, webinar should be made available. And there should be a way of monitoring, of evaluating if all these uh, suggestions and things that have been mentioned are being followed. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, yes, uh, just to respond to Badina, that, that's the intention and that's why we had Professor Etienne um, at the beginning. Um, the communique will be shared at the AAU conference also and also with all the stakeholders within the higher education um, sphere in the continent. And uh, we plan to find a way to engage and continue with this. And I can see Professor Ile here, so I'll give him the floor for a short talk before we log off. Okay. Thank you, Apio. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, in closing uh, this webinar, permit me to, first of all, thank Professor Abadina Adewale for his wonderful facilitation and especially his uh, short but very useful uh, summaries and conclusions. I would also like to thank Professor Oyeole for his insightful keynote, which has set up the path, and also his additional contribution to the discussion. And finally, uh, the take home and uh, the recommendations. I would also like to thank the panelists for their <laughs> respective contribution to the various sessions of uh, this important topic of university industry linkages. They shared their thoughts timely, even though due to time constraint, they were not able to have enough time to explain their ideas. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to thank all participants for their participation uh, in the Q&A session and for their time. This webinar is uh, the third of the series. And uh, also we look forward to meeting you again virtually on this platform for the activities to come. 
Uh, I perfectly agree with uh, uh, Dr. Yemis and uh, the other panelists that uh, the discussion should not be stopped here. For Professor Bai Obanya, you all know, said, and I quote, the best discussion is the one which never come to an end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Professor Ile. Thank you, all panelists. We really appreciate your time and we really appreciate all the insights that you've given to us. And uh, we look forward to further engagement. So if you receive any requests from us, please, if you have time, be willing to, so that we can continue the discussion, as Professor Ila has said. Uh, thank you to all attendees. We really appreciate this. We intend to have a data-driven policy within the continent, and this is one way to do it. And we are pa participants and stakeholders in the higher education arena. So it is up to all of us to be able to contribute to that. I will um, now just mention, we'll have the recording again, just a repeat, uh, have the recordings and we'll share with you this recording. And the communique will go out to the AAU conference. This will always be shared by all the participants, uh, to all the participants. So thank you again, and uh, we wish you all the best. Please join us for our next webinar, which will be on 29th, at 12, 29th June at 12 GMT on leadership and management. So uh, we're talking about policy. We need the leaders also to listen to this. So please join us and raise any questions that need to be. Thank you. And we really appreciate your time and on all the questions and commitments that you've given to this webinar. Have a lovely evening or afternoon, depending on where you are. Thank you. Thank you, very Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Professor Yeole. Thank you very Bye. much. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. you, thank you. Bye. <laughs>